Brothers, how y'all doing? I want to talk to you on this Unplugged. I was going to put this on Patreon in the men's room, but I thought I'd share this with the world. One of the most attractive things that you could do is, with your woman, that is, is to show up. What I mean, show up in her space. Uh, everything that we do is mental. It all starts with the, with the mind, and that's where the heart is as well, because if you get the mind, you can get the heart as well. You get the heart, you got the mind. That's why God says love him with all your heart, mind, and everything else will follow. Let me tell you, if you're having some issues with your, your woman, your wife, there's some things that you could do to really re-spark that might have been there. I'm hoping there was something there and you lost it and then not the other way around, meaning there's some women who force you into a relationship thinking that you're going to change and mesh and assimilate into what she needs. That's the worst thing that a woman can do. But to the brothers, let me tell you, if there's a word here that is um, new to so many people, but that's going to help you understand intelligence and sexuality and yearning and desire, the desire of your wife sapiosexual is that name that word that is and uh, let's talk about this in a minute Hey, y'all, you're doing all right? This is So Walter, and this is Unplugged, and it's 9 o'clock Central Standard Time at night time. You might be watching it in the morning. That's your part. You should be watching it at night. Because I want to talk about this whole thing, sapiosexual. It's a word that uh, a lot of you have heard, and some of you never heard it before. But here's it's spelled S-A-P-I-O, sexual. And this is what Google is saying, uh, finding in, in, uh, intelligence sexually attractive or arousing. You're finding intelligence the intelligence in a man. Yeah, there's intelligence in a woman, but we're talking about we're talking men right now. Uh, a person who finds intelligence sexually attractive or arousing. For example, I'm a sapiosexual and I like to talk. Hmm. Or I met a PhD student from Germany who told me that he was sapiosexual. Brothers, There are people, women out there who are so attracted to your intelligence, your smarts, the way you construct your words, these salads that you create. And I like to go to restaurants where the food looks tasty. And I like to go to restaurants where they make the food up in such a, an amazing way that I don't want to eat the food just yet. So I pick up my phone and take a picture or a video because it's all about presentation first. And then I dive in. That's sapiosexuality. You see, you pay more for restaurants who hire a chef who takes pride in his food, but how it looks. And he puts things on it and he makes it look like it's a masterpiece because it is for, to him. But the presentation, it's, it's such a glorious looking piece of your mouth is watering when you see it. Because how it's dressed, they call it. With the hopes that it tastes just as good as it looks. Sapiosexual. When you take good care of yourself, brothers, your teeth might be going all over the place. And it doesn't matter how smooth your skin is and how nice your hair is combed and the, and the clothes that you wear and your perfume. But if your teeth going all over the place... Chef Ramsey would take that, say, uh, put that back in the kitchen. Matter of fact, he'd throw it in the garbage. I don't care how much that thing costs. 
in product. He, throw it in garbage and start all over again or you, he going to send you home. You see, it's all about the presentation. It's all about the look. Unplugged is my opportunity to sit and have a presentation so that you can listen to the content. It's okay to do that. It's all right. So, brothers, you probably feel that you're not that intelligent. It's not true. There is something that she saw in you, and it might have been something outside of your intelligence. True. But, man, let me tell you, all it takes is for you to do is sit with somebody who knows a little bit what you know, or more than that is what you know, you sit with him and let him show you something, all right? And then share that with your woman. Ooh-wee. I did a show on sexless, sexless marriage, and I, I, I did that when I do my Romance in the Park series, in the park, all right? And I, and I, I would talk about stuff uh, that there's a reason why your woman don't want you to touch her anymore because she lost something because you did lose something. You stopped doing something or you stopped saying something or you, you don't look the way you used to look, all these things. And what happens is when we get together, especially if it's in marriage, we let ourselves go. We often talk about the woman letting herself go with her weight and her hair and, and what she wears. And she just, she just, I got him now. I don't have to. But what about you brothers? You know, one of the most romantic things, I'm giving you this hint, all right? I wish, again, there was a Soul Walter Jones show when I was married. Man, let me tell you, I had the best, I had the best marriage in town. One of the most romantic things that you could do is to ask your woman to wash your hair. <laughs> I, I should have had some beautiful music playing in the background when I said that. Get your hair cut. You come home. And you ask your woman to wash your hair. That is an intimate moment between the two of you. It's like the altar call. I tell y'all, turn the cameras off because that's an intimate moment between a person and their God and the saints and the ecclesia. Have her to wash your hair. Put the, put the, um, uh, the soap in there. I'm saying soap, but I'm trying to say put the, uh, what do you call it in there? <laughs> I don't know why I can't think of, of the, the stuff you put in your hair to watch. <laughs> put that in your hair. Okay. <laughs> they in the comment section right now trying to tell me what, what to put in your hair. And then do it again. I think it's called shampoo. <laughs> you try doing this show every night. Put the shampoo and then have her to shampoo it again. And then put conditioner in there. Stay with it as long as you can. Now, that's a re that's a romantic moment right there, okay? That's an intimate moment. You all can be talking about stuff while she's doing that. She's rubbing your head and all this. Oh, man, it's just beautiful. But, brothers, here's the most romantic part about the washing of the hair, the drying. The drying. You do not dry your hair. Let her dry your hair, all right? There is something in the woman, and this has got to be part two and three, y'all, because I already know it. This is this, this is going to get long. Not tonight. I can't, I can't go long tonight. There is something that God has put in the woman, and it's called a nurture. And there's something about the way she nurtures or her instinct to nurture. And when she's washing your hair, she's nurturing you. Number two, she sees that you are uh, investing something in her time and in her space. But when it's time to dry your hair, make sure she has the towel. The, make sure the towel is big. Not those little small towels. Not those hand towels. I'm talking bath towels. All right? And let her dry your hair and watch how she dries your hair. She's going to dry your hair. She's going to take the towel and go in your ears, get the water out your ears, and she's going to, uh, uh, you know, your, 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 the towel's going to be over your face, and she's going to do all those things. And when she lifts the towel off of your face, 
Keep your eyes closed. Don't open your eyes. I should, I should charge people for this, all right? Do not open your eyes. Keep your eyes closed and wait. What your wife is going to do, and I'm telling you, 90% of the times, she's going to kiss you. <laughs> if this was live, it, 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 it would go somewhere else. Your woman is going to kiss you. Why? There's a ritual that we all have. When we do something, we have to do the next thing. When it comes to me eating Snicker bars, I can't eat a Snicker bar like everybody do. I eat around the nugget. I eat the chocolate off the surface first, and I get down to the peanuts. You understand? Uh, and I eat the nugget up under the chocolate, and then I get to the peanuts, and I eat the peanuts every time for years. I've never eat a, a Snicker bar. I just bit into it, and I was done. A woman does that in her nurturing. She will dry you off. She will raise the veil as if, as if this is a wedding ceremony. And she will see this, this little guy, this child, this, this product of her heart. She sees a man who is in desperate need of a mother, a nurturer. And she can't do nothing but kiss you. And she will kiss your face and kiss you in your lips. Sapiosexual is the person who is motivated and can't don't know what to do when this man shows how intelligent he is. But here's the thing. Don't spend a whole lot of money in school and what have you. Find this one thing uh, that interests you and study it. And then bring it home to her and say, babe, let me tell you something. Whether you can tell her you discovered it or just act like you didn't dis just discover it, you all always known it, and just talk about it. And watch how your woman pep up. Oh, oh, my strong man. <laughs> oh, my intellectual. My P Look at my doctor. Look at my PhD guy. Hey, hey. <laughs> I'm telling you, it works. But here's how it works, though. She know a joker. She know a faker. And she can tell if you're genuine or not. So I'm telling you, brothers, a woman is motivated by emotion and by this heart. This blood pump right here, she's motivated by that. It's, it's, it's actually up here, but I'm pointing here so you know she knows. And um, because she knows what you're doing, you know, she'll try. She'll say, oh, little Tink Tink is trying to impress me. All right. That's the nurture in her. But when you're genuine with it, mm. listen, these sexless marriages can be fixed because everything is in the mind. And when, when does sex begin? Somebody said it begins in the kitchen. Well, I can debate that. Somebody says it's starting in the bedroom. Mm. It can in the morning. You don't have to have, have it. And, and it, what happens is, is when you show her the attention that she's looking for, it happens at the end of the day. Mm -hmm. It will. It's what you do throughout the day. I'm talking husbands and wives. I have to say that <laughs> on the show. It's what you do throughout the day that can cause this sexless marriage to be fixed. It starts with sapiosexual Things. So this is part one, y'all. We'll do part two and part three. But today is talking about sexual, sexual. But be, be natural in it. There's something that you have studied. There's something that's in you that's innate. There's something that you do. There's some knowledge that you, that you know. And what you need to do is sit with her and express this, these things about. And then what you need to do is find out what she likes. What is it about her? What's this one thing that she always talk about? What is this thing that, that at the end of her day or, or the middle of her day or the beginning of her day that she does? What is what what are those things? And then what you do is, because this, this is what I did, I studied those things about her. Uh, before there was Google, I had to go to the library or I, 
I went to get grab an encyclopedia or I was looking at a PBS uh, special or something like that. And I, I went to cable TV and I was going to the, the Discover Channel popped up something that she does. And I studied it and studied it and studied it and studied it. And then when I had an opportunity without distraction, I sat with her and I said, oh, yeah, by, by the way, baby, blah, blah, blah. And then she's like, whoa, I didn't know you. What you know about a woman's hair? An eyeliner. <laughs> huh? What do you know about the BBL? <laughs> what you know about all that? Oh, no, I know. I know about that stuff. Let me tell you. Here's, here's, in 1865, <laughs> and watch how things change in your life. That sapiosexual thing is something <laughs> that a lot of men wish that they had so that they can get the next girl. Uh, don't abuse it. No. Be real with it. Be natural with it. And chase after your own woman. I want to end with that. There's a lot of women out there. I know better, better than everybody. <laughs> I sound like Trump. I know better than everybody. All right. There's a lot of women out there. But if you have one and you want to keep that one, do what you can to study her. Like you study everything, whether it's sports or whether it's the, the new hair products that they have for a good, nice wave in your hair or the, the, the latest clothes or shoes. Study your woman. Study, study, study her. And sometimes you don't have to ask her anything to study her. You're just watching her. The devil watches. And that's how he knows how to trick you because he watches your every mood. So you watch her and study her. And then you can finish her sentences because you studied her. You got to show yourself, be present in her life. Man, I sure wish somebody had told me this when I had, when I was married. I wish somebody had told me this. But now I have the experience now so that I can, and I have the platform to maybe help you out. I want to do part two with this sexless marriage uh, series here uh, because one of the big problems is that it gets to a point where you don't want sex because you didn't have it. And the body that is at rest wants rest. The body that's having sex wants sex. The body that don't get sex after a certain period of time don't want it. But if you're in a marriage, <sighs> sex is so important for the unity of two people. It is. God designed it for unity. Yesterday I was talking about the pardon power of the president and how it was given to him so that there might be unity and cause mercy and peace among the people who reside here. Sex is that. And makeup sex is undescribable. So people are like, why are you talking about this? Elder Jones, Pastor Jones. Because the Apostle Paul did. And guess what? He wasn't married. Why is it that you get upset with me, a single man, talking about this stuff, but you don't get upset with Paul, who was single? Matter of fact, he talked y'all out of marriage. He said, dwell with your virgin. But in this present time, it's good that you don't be married. He said, I wish that you would be like me. Why, why is it that y'all don't repeat that much and y'all pushing everybody into marriage? Marriage is not for everybody. Is, is when I was coming up and still look like it today that singleness is a is a curse. Y'all leave the singles alone. They don't they don't have to get married. Let them let them you know dedicate their lives to God and and tend to to other things like the sheep and 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 bills and work and children what have you. Because some of them have children because you know whether they were married at one time or were not they got children. Leave them alone. So I'm qualified. As a man and as a man of God, mind of God, to talk about this because I was there. That was my life. I was married and I got children. And so Paul might have been married because being a Pharisee, it, you know, it was almost required that they were married. So he might have had, his wife might have died. We don't know. But the Lord gave him some things to say to the people that during that time, I can do the same thing. I think I'm a good counselor, but I counsel people on things that I experienced. And then 
when they come together in holy matrimony and do all these things, and I send them to my brother Rodney or somebody who's got a successful marriage. It's a wonderful portal of uh, unity and, well, balancedness, right? So listen, brothers, you want your wife to really be involved in you? Read a book. <laughs> do some Google searches or watch YouTube. Uh, keep watching the So Walter Jones Show. We talk about history all the time, all right? But let's try to fix this sexless marriage issue, and that will really deter a lot of people from cheating on it one another not just the men are doing it but women are getting even and the level of women who are cheating now it's going up like this here's the men the women going up like this why it's a whole nother day y'all want part two come sit on the couch let's talk about it if you disagree with me i can't wait to read the comments i can't wait meanwhile hey grab a towel go wash your man's head brothers Keep your eyes closed and watch what she does. You'll thank me. So Walter Jones Unplugged.